I'm going to uh, talk about the role of microRNA in cancer, in particular in uh, leukemias and lymphomas, because a uh, um, few years ago we found that, that uh, genetic alteration in microRNA uh, caused uh, a very common leukemia called chronic uh, lymphocytic leukemia. And that was the first evidence of the role of non-coding genes in cancer. Okay. Can you tell us more about the background of this? and how uh, The background uh, is that uh, it was known that in CLL there was a deletion on, in one chromosome, chromosome 13. And we thought that uh, in that region there should have been a tumor suppressor involved in CLL. So we look for this tumor suppressor, we scan the region very carefully, and we couldn't find the gene. And finally, we got the idea that could be gene coding for non-coding RNA. And it, it, we found that was absolutely true, and the great majority of CLL, of patients with CLL, have a deletion of these microRNAs. So that was a stunning discovery because uh, it went against the dogma that was that all the cancer genes were protein coding genes. And how is this changing your research today? Yeah, but we are continuing in the same area and uh, we take advantage uh, of uh, changes in microRNA, this regulation microRNA, for better diagnosis and prognosis uh, of cancer to follow the success of therapy. And in addition, we hope that uh, soon or later, we hope soon, microRNA and anti-microRNA will become drug for the treatment of uh, some tumors. Are there any subtypes of CLL that are most or least susceptible to mRNA regulation? But um, essentially, they, these two microRNA, microRNA, MIR 15 and 16, are deleted in between 70 and 90 percent of CLL, so in most of them. So that makes those uh, uh, CLL sensitive to a microRNA uh, treatment. But the, even the most fascinating thing is that ages ago, in fact in 1984, we, uh, my lab cloned a gene that turned out to be very important. And, the, the gene, and I named this gene BCL2. And later on it was found that the BCL2 is overexpressed in CLL. And now there is a new drug against BCL2, ABT199, that uh, has been shown to be very successful in the treatment of patients with CLL. But we found that a target of MIR15 and 16, these two microRNAs that are deleted in CLL, target, these two microRNA target BCL2. So, microRNA are negative regulator of gene expression. So, in CLL, the loss of these two microRNA cause the overexpression of BCL2. You treat uh, the patient with an anti-BCL2 drug and that's very successful in cause complete remission. When it comes to treatment, mm -hmm. microRNAs are famously short-lived, very transient. Is that a problem? But it's really not true. MicroRNA, uh, naturally, if they are free in blood, uh, have a limited lifespan, but not um, shorter than uh, many drugs. When they are in encapsulated, for example, in exosome or microvesicle, so they can last a very, very, very long time. Yeah? So one of the way people are uh, using microRNA now is uh, in, uh, <coughs> in uh, microsphere or other, uh, another way that can protect the microRNA for some time in order to uh, increase the half-life of microRNA. That can be done quite uh, readily now. 
Is there something that you'd like to offer as a summary, as a conclusion? No, I think that uh, microRNA are uh, um, providing another dimension in cancer because uh, in every cancer we have shown this regulation of microRNA occurs. And we can take advantage of this dysregulation for developing new therapies. In some cases, the therapy will be like uh, the treatment with an anti-BCL2, okay? Because microRNA dysregulation causes overexpression of BCL2. In other cases, uh, microRNA will be used. I'm sure that within a few years, you will have uh, the development of microRNA-based therapies. Thank you.